All right, guys, I think we're in business now. Give me a big old heck yes if you guys can hear me and see me clearly in the comments. There we go. You know, I wanted to like make you guys freak out for about six Just make you wonder what is going on. Is it going to work? I see you guys. Gabriel, good to see you. Look, the whole, the whole SAS dot crew is live. We've got obviously local here in Slovenia, but we got the whole SAS dot crew here. Matic and team, thank you so much for putting this on. And guys, listen, I uh, stalked you guys. I went in here into this live session, went to attendees and started clicking down your names to try and get a sense of what you guys are building, but it was a little bit difficult uh, because not everyone has updated their profile. So this is the only time I think you'll have permission to spam like you've never spammed before. Put your website link in the chat real quick and just let me know if you're bootstrapped or if you've raised capital. If you've raised, type how much. Go ahead and do that right now in the chat. Again, you'll never, never again will you be able to spam the chat like this, but go ahead and put it in the chat. With Kinga Edwards joining. Guys, let me know what you're building. Okay, Liam is building 360 Learning, uh, Series B, 50 million raised. Very good. Who else? Who else? Don't be shy. Andres Solinic, I see you. Darko Domenkanda, I see you. Igor Kuna, Yaka Smid, Yost Mandik, I see all of you guys. Go ahead and let me know what are you guys building. Okay, Martin's building prospectroll.com, bestemailverifier.com, smarttable.com. Martin. You're building every SaaS company. How are you doing this? <laughs> you must have a thousand person team. We've got Alan again building Plio.io Series B, $78 million raised. Guys, I'm excited to be with you. What we're gonna talk about today are new ways to raise capital, uh, specifically fast. And the reason I feel so excited and, and I feel a little undercover here talking to you guys based there in Slovenia is a lot of you guys might feel that you had to come pre-COVID to San Francisco or New York to raise capital because you are getting nasty term sheets from European VCs, term sheets that you know wouldn't give you the valuation you wanted or you know had weird clauses and liquidation preferences that you didn't want. I'm gonna show you some new ways to raise capital without having to sell a big chunk of your company. All right, Martin's saying, I, I'm a product guy here, need help with sales. Domen is building clean shelf. Aljaz, did I say that right? Aljaz building flexkeeping.com, two million. Sport, Sportify, is that, am I saying that right, Darko? Uh, landing page, starting raising money. Uh, Rock, Git for designers and closed beta. Very cool, Bitpanda, 52 million USD Series A, great. So some folks raised a lot, some raised none. I wish more people that are bootstrap type bootstrap in the chat because you should be proud of it. Owning 100% of your company as you grow it to five, 10 million in sales and getting stupid rich off dividends and free cash flow is a beautiful place to be, okay? It's a beautiful place to be. You should be very proud of that. Let me now share my screen with you guys <coughs> and see if um, if we can make this work. Give me one second here. Okay, I'm gonna kill that. I'm gonna share this and this should be beautiful. You should see the slides now. Guys, just yes or no. Can you see the slides? It should say how to raise 1 million in 72 hours. Yes or no, do we see that? Tell me in the chat, yes or no, do we see that? Very good. All right, guys, let's rock and roll. So this is where my story started. Now, I don't know what the temperature is right now in Slovenia. Obviously, I know it's late. But for me, this is where everything started, a newspaper stand. It was Blacksburg, Virginia. So on the mountains in the East Coast here in the United States, it was wintertime. And no joke, folks, I was sprinting. Ziga, I was sprinting like you've never seen someone sprint before, okay? Maja, I beat you in a race. I challenge you to race, I beat you in a race. Okay, I was running so fast. And the question you're going and wondering is, Nathan, why were you running? This was why. This was why. I was 21 years old. I was studying architecture at Virginia Tech. And the local paper put me in what's called A1, the big, beautiful A1. Now, if you're in the sort of PR world, you know A1 is the paper, the newspaper, and A1 is the prime slot. The big title on the cover. I was running to the newspaper stand because this was on the cover. I'll let you guys read my screen. Darko, Doman, can you guys read this right here where my mouse is? For those of you that can't see it, I'll read it to you. It says, big deal in Blacksburg. There's a picture of me, my first SaaS company, Heyo. And the text was, billionaire Randall Kirk has invested some of his venture capital fund on the fast growing startup, specifically $2 million. Can you imagine getting a cover like this? I thought this is what it was all about. I was so naive. I didn't know anything. I was 21. The company was doing about $99,000 a month in revenue, United States dollars. 
we were great. I was living in the best property on campus. I was still a student. We had 10, 20 people on the team, but this was the start of the end. And I'll show you what I mean. Look at our board deck. Does anyone ever, anyone ever do this? They show you their board deck. This is literally a screenshot of our board deck from August of 2012. Now, can you guys see what happened here? Look closely at the blue column. Look closely there at the blue column. You guys see what happened? So leading up to April of 2012, which is right here, we hit about 99,000 in revenue. We then got the first tranche of the 2 million, so about 400,000. And then we slowly and painfully started to flatline. No growth, no growth. Now, strategically, I'll talk about why that happened in a second, but this was the beginning of the end. Look what it did to my cap table. Now, guys, I just maturity wise, I want to know where you guys are at. Yes or no. Do you guys understand what a cap table is? Just type yes, exclamation point, capital letters in the chat. You guys know what cap table is? Okay, Maddox says yes. Ziga is saying yes. So, guys, look, again, no one ever does this. No one ever puts their actual cap table up. Okay, now remember, we had just raised capital. We were doing about a million dollar run rate. This was our cap table. Okay, this was our cap table. Now, here was the issue with raising that money. Hannah Abaris, look at what it did. So here's what it looked like. We had an early angel that owned 3%, an early developer owned 0.7%, another angel at a 10th. One of my co-founders owned 5%. Here I am. Guys, just to make sure you can read this clearly, type this number where my mouse is. Type the percent of the company that I owned in the chat. Can you type this in the chat, this number? Type that in the chat if you can see it. That's how much equity I owned after raising, okay, right here where it says me. That's how much equity I owned after raising, yep, you guys got it. Matic, Darko, Doman, 38%, okay, 38.06% to be exact. Another co-founder, 8%. And then look at as we go down here, the Series A investors, the ones that put in 2 million bucks, they bought about 20% of the company, okay, about 20% of the company. So we raised at an $8.5 million pre-money valuation plus the 2 million we raised means our post-money valuation was 10.5 million. 8.5 plus two. They now own 20% of the company, okay? But they also made me hire a COO because they thought I was too young. They thought I was too young, which I hate. How old are you guys? Type your age in the, if you're, if you're comfortable doing it, type your age in the chat. How old are you guys? They said, Nathan, you're 21. You're too young. You're too, you're too young to be running a million dollar SaaS company. You need an adult supervision. Eva, Oven, maybe you've gotten this comment at 25, right? They said, you're too young. So I had to give another 9%, okay, Yost Mandek, 22. I had to give another 9% to the adult supervision COO. So altogether, 9% plus 20%, that's 30% of the company, basically, that I sold raising that money. And here's where that was the beginning of the end. Look at all these publicly traded SaaS companies. This is the amount of equity that each of these founders owned by the time they IPO'd. Scott Dorsey at Exact Target only owned 3%. Aaron Levy at Box, 5.7%. Joe Payne at Eloqua, 5.5%. These are the founders, folks. These aren't investors. These are the founders, the guys and gals that put up their blood, sweat, and tears. They wrote the first line of code from their basement. They hustled and closed their first customer, probably door knocking back in these days, right? Okay. Henry Shuck at Zoom Info just went public a couple, well, we'll call it a month and a half ago. This is how much he owned. This is how much he owned. And Eric Wan at Zoom did the best job, owned about 20.5% of his company when he IPO'd, all right? Now, here's where I get into a question I wanna ask you guys. I now spend my time running a podcast called The Top Entrepreneurs, and that's how and why I've personally interviewed over 2,200 SaaS CEOs, ranging from Matt Mullenweg, who obviously created WordPress via Automatic. He also bought Tumblr from Yahoo!, the Freshworks founder, Giresh, who is about to go, well, we'll see, but likely filing for an IPO soon. Sid at GitLab with over 120 million in revenue. Manny came on, you know, Looker and Frank Bean came on right before they sold to Google for over $2 billion. So I've had these guys on <clears throat> and a the theme <clears throat> that I've seen between them, or sorry, from people that raise a bunch of capital versus the ones that don't, you never hear about the ones that don't raise capital. Why is that? Why is that? Well, VCs need the storyline of it's important to raise capital to permeate the press and be everywhere and be everywhere. That's why, you know, if people didn't want VC capital, they'd be out of business. But some of the happiest founders I've met 
are bootstrapped, doing $5 million in revenue. They own 100% of their company. They profit $1.5 million annually. And at the end of each year, they do a profit share with all their employees. But they usually take home eight hundred dollars or $900,000, maybe a million dollars personally. It is much easier to build a $5 million revenue bootstrap SaaS company than it is to swing for the fences for a unicorn, go raise a bunch of money, and try and build a billion-dollar unicorn that IPOs. Guys, give me a big old heck yes if you agree with me. Do you get the logic there? If you're going to go for unicorn status, it requires a decade of time, hundreds of millions of raised, and by the way, you have to basically IPO or exit. Otherwise, you basically as a founder get nothing because of how liquidation preferences work. It's way easier to build and build wealth as a founder, especially if you're in Slovenia, even me, I'm based in LA right now, to build five, 10 million bucks in run rate and get wealthy off the profits. So what does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean? Let's dive into what this actually means. Going to this next slide. Guys, there are six ways today that you guys can raise capital without giving up crazy amounts of equity. Now, here's the first one. I'm gonna start with one we all know. You can go raise equity. You can go raise equity. Hannah Alvarez, there's nothing wrong with that, right? Matic, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with Many of the founders you've had on today are in the chat. They've raised capital. Nothing wrong with raising equity. But what's the cost? What's the cost? You guys can see on the left side of my screen, the axes here. Equity usually costs about 40% in terms of interest rate. Meaning for me, when I sold 30% of my company for 2 million bucks, if I exited three years from now and they got seven, eight, nine, ten million 10 million for their 30%, I effectively paid them a 40% interest rate in addition to all of their money back. So equity is extremely expensive. Here's the next version, safes. Now a safe is usually how Andreessen, NEA, first round, 0.9, it's usually how they do early seed stage deals. You guys, I think, are familiar with the safe. The next is a seal. Guys, yes or no in the chat, have you heard of a seal? Yes or no? Have you heard of a seal, Andrej? A seal is a new asset class. Okay. Super. Okay. Hannah said no. Ziga said no. Anyone else? Has anyone heard of it? It's okay if you haven't. Seal is sort of a new asset class. Verdict is out on if this takes off or not. But basically, it's will a VC or an investor saying we'll give you money today and you buy it back over the next whatever three to six years. Right, so you pay them back their capital and they still own equity. Now, all together, Ernest Capital, Tiny Seed, and NDVC are really experimenting with these kinds of SEAL approaches. All together, they've deployed less than $50 million compared to billions of equity and billions on safe. So it's a very small asset class and we'll have to see if it takes off. Verdict is sort of still out on this, okay? So Verdict's still out, Darkomatic, Verdict is still out on SEALs. What's the next option for founders? Well, guys, they're called RBFs. They're called RBFs, okay? revenue-based financing. The companies doing this at scale are folks like Lighter Capital, Bigfoot Capital, Flywheel Capital in Southeast Asia. And what they do is they'll lend you a certain amount of money, usually one to 2x your monthly recurring revenue, maybe 3x. You then, let's say it's 100 grand. You then pay back 1.5 to 3x that amount over a two to four year period. So it'd be like me giving you guys 100,000 bucks today and then saying, pay me back 300,000 over the next two to four years. And the way you're gonna pay me back is a percent of your monthly revenue. That's why it's called revenue-based financing, okay? And that percent of monthly revenue is usually somewhere between, call it four and 9%, four and 9%. Now, does anyone see what the problem with this is? Anyone see a problem here? Think about it. If you're paying back as a percent of your monthly receipts, what happens if you grow really fast? Where are all you guys that said you raised, you know, 50 million, 80 million, Series B? What happens if you grow really fast? If you pay back as a percent of your monthly revenue, you end up paying it back way faster than two to four years, which means you, oh, yes, Darko, you nailed it. You end up overpaying you end up paying an effective interest rate of something above 20%, between 20 and sometimes as high as 40%, especially when you add in prepayment penalties, origination fees, and things like that. That being said, it gives you flexibility, and RBF gives you flexibility, and you have to give up 
no equity, which we like. Okay. Can anyone guess what the next way is? That was four. We have two more left. Six ways to raise capital without getting crazy diluted. Anyone have a guess what the next one is? Darko, you guessed, you guessed right on overpaying. You have a guess on the next one? The fifth way, the fifth way, the fifth way are term loans. And all a term loan is, guys, is it's a fixed interest rate. So instead of paying back five to 10% of your monthly receipts, you'll pay back a flat interest rate, usually between 15% and 25%. Okay, 15 to 25%. I put here 10 to 20%, but you get the idea. So this is not tied to your revenue, which is nice because if you get the term loan money today, you use it to grow really fast. You don't have to pay it back faster. It's a fixed rate over time. And then lastly, guys, you have banks, okay, bank debt. This is like SVB, CIBC. These are great options if you've raised a lot of VC. These banks usually will not give you capital unless they have see they saw a VC invest in you recently because those banks are essentially giving you cash and the collateral the reason they're comfortable doing it is because they see all the money in your bank from the VC. Who's with me so far? I know that was a lot of complex terms. Just give me a bill call. Heck yes in the comments. Ziga, are you with me? Hannah, are you with me? Six ways. I'm going to dive into one of them here in a second. But six ways. Are you with me? Maddox says yes. Hannah says yes. Good. You guys are with me. Cool. Otto saying this is so good. Keep it coming. Very good. I love this. And I don't know, guys, if there's a way for me to bring any of you guys live. But if you guys see a button, if you see a button on your screen that says join Nathan live, click it and I will figure out a way to bring you on. If not, no worries. We'll keep chatting and you want to keep watching Eric Sue in the house as well. His content, top, top notch stuff. So what I want to do now is encourage you guys to think about, I'm going to stop sharing for a second. Here's what I want you guys to think about. How many of you guys um, are actually in control of your company? I know a lot of you are sort of project managers. Maybe you're not C-suite. Maybe you are. But just type founder in the comments if you are the founder, meaning you are the one in charge of making capital decisions for your business. Who's a founder? Han okay, so Hannah's a founder. Who else? Blendor, I hope I'm saying that right, is a founder. Who else? Darko's a co-founder, okay? So guys, Hannah, Blendor, Darko, Kinga, co-founder, Aljaz co-founder, I want to I want to run, run an experiment with you guys. If you guys have identified a way to spend money to make money, a user acquisition channel, okay? Here's my question to you. How much capital, Rock is a co-founder, guys, how much capital would you love to have today to run your next experiment? Think about it, type it in the chat. How much capital would you love to have today to run your next experiment? Because based off the thousands of CEOs I've interviewed, especially the bootstrapped ones, they're always one experiment away from the big break that adds a million in revenue or something like that. So how much would you want to, okay, Rock just said 1.5 million would be great. Kinga, Darko, Blender, don't be shy. Hannah, don't be shy. How much would you guys want today? If, if you could have whatever you wanted. Okay, Martin, that's great. Martin said $20,000, great. Who else? Darko saying 75,000, good. Blender says 300 grand. Now here's the exercise I wanna do with you guys. Here's the exercise I want to do with you guys. I run Founder Path, right? So I've helped founders raise a bunch of debt capital. And one of the things that's important to me is even if no one works with us and takes money from us, we want to build a we wanted to build a calculator so that anyone could see how much it would cost them. So Martin, for your 20K, for example, watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go ahead and open up my browser window. And I'm going to run this analysis. Blender, I'll do it for you. Kinga, I'll do it for you as well, okay? And you guys are, are welcome to follow along. I'm going to share my screen here so you can see it. And uh, Martin, let's do you first, okay? Let's do Martin first. So when you go to Founder Path, ignore signing up. Don't sign up. But go down here. Use this thing for free, okay? So again, let's do, you just said you wanted $20,000. By typing in the amount you want, we will auto update this left side so you can get a sense of what it would cost you. Okay. Martin, you with me, man? You with me? So take a look at this, All right? So 20,000 today, it would, the loan would cost you $6,718 and you'd pay it back once per month for 48 months. And it will be about $560. You with me? Okay. So $560 for four years in exchange for us giving you, or you getting $20,000 today. 
So Martin, here's my question to you. And this is the question you should all ask. Martin, can you spend 20,000 today and add more than $560 in new monthly recurring revenue? Say that in a different way. Can you spend 20 grand today and add more than the cost of the loan, the debt in new MRR? Do you see how this works, guys? You don't give up any equity. There's no warrants. There's no board seat. There's no prepayment penalty. There's no personal guarantee, which means we can't come after your house in Slovenia, right? If you don't pay, right? It's super straightforward. So Kinga, let's do this for you. Let's try this for a hundred thousand dollars. We'll type in a hundred thousand. Okay. Here's what it would be for you. For you, you'd get a hundred thousand today and you'd pay back 48 equal payments of $2,700 per month for four years. So Kinga, your question would be, can you take a hundred grand today and add more than three grand in new MRR? Now, three grand in new MRR, Kinga, you can, you can do this math, but I'll repeat it. Three grand in new MRR is 36,000 in new annual recurring revenue, 36,000 in new ARR. So the question really is, can you take a hundred grand today and add more than 36,000 in ARR? right? So that's $3 today for $1 of AR. A lot of you guys, Kinga, you're scrappy as heck. Darko, I bet you're super scrappy too. Martin, I bet you're scrappy. I bet you guys know how to spend a dollar and get a dollar of new ARR. So imagine spending $3. I bet you could get $3 of new ARR, but all you need in order to make the loan profitable for you is one new dollar of ARR. So this is why, I hope this math guys, underscores why this new asset class, right, debt, is enabling founders to build their companies without taking a bunch of dilution. Now, I want to make sure I didn't lose you guys in any of the math. So guys, give me just, again, if it makes total sense to you, throw in some exclamation points in the chat, a 10 plus plus plus. If it doesn't make sense, say, Nathan, what's going on? And, and we'll go through it again. Does it make sense? Okay, Otto saying, uh, auto saying now do rock. Yeah, rock. So if we did 1.5 million, let's do that, right? One, 500, one, two, three rock. Your question would be, can you take 1.5 million today and add more than $40,000 in MRR or 480,000 in new ARR? That would be your question, right? So if you want to actually see sort of how this works, you would then click apply and actually uh, apply to go through it. But I don't want to get into all that today. I just want to show you guys how this works, right? How this works. And we're not the only ones doing this, guys. So I want to give you this resource. It's a big Excel file. I'm going to show it to you real quick. The big Excel file I've put together with all of the SaaS lenders that I have personally worked with. Because the only reason I built FounderPath is from my podcast, right? So we put all the podcast episodes up at gitlatka.com. We have over, how many do we have now? We have over 4,512 SaaS founders that I've interviewed that we've put them all up with their revenue, their cash flow, their annual contract values, their churn. And all we've done is so many of these founders have asked me to help them raise capital. So starting in 2016, I started helping and I started building this list of all the capital providers I've helped founders work with. So you guys will now have this list. I'm gonna send it to you right now in the calculator area, or sorry, in the chat area, there you go. So you guys can open this doc and check out a bunch of these different lenders. And you wanna pay, I see you guys joining, which is great. You wanna pay careful attention to this column that I just highlighted, minimum revenue. You wanna pay careful attention to the max loan value. So this is a multiple of your MRR and the max debt they can put into any one company, right, into any one company. And then again, if you wanna work with any of these folks, you can see their effective cost of capital. So we charge between 12 and 18%. Okay, and there's a bunch of other providers. We put up all of their sort of interest and things like that as you go down. So on that note, guys, I hope you found that super valuable. I hope it made a lot of sense to you. If you wanna type in your own amount and play with the calculator, that's the link. I just put it in the chat. I encourage you to just go there, scroll down and type in numbers see what it would look like. But the important thing I want you guys to know is founders today, I don't care if you're in, you know, Slovenia or Kentucky or Southeast India or Cape Town, Africa. If you're building a software company today and you're a founder, you have more power than ever. 
you have more power than ever. The VC path is not the only path. In the last 25 minutes, I showed you six different ways you can raise a million bucks many times very quick. So the debt stuff, you can do in under 72 hours. We've done a lot of money in under 72 hours, okay? VC takes longer. But I walked you through that over the past 25 minutes, and I just want you to remember, you have more power than ever. You don't have to only sell a big chunk of your company to raise capital. And the reason this is important is because you guys know just as well as I do, as a bootstrap founder especially, you're literally one experiment away from adding millions of dollars of revenue to your business. Don't sell a big chunk of your company to run those experiments. Try debt capital, run the experiment, grow your business. And remember, there's nothing wrong with building a five or $10 million revenue SaaS company and building extreme wealth for you, your team, your family off the profits. That's what true wealth is about. I think that's why we all start companies in the first place anyway, is to be happy and have a lot of freedom. Guys, on that note, my name is Nathan Latka, founder of founderpath.com. I feed off your energy. So if you enjoyed this presentation on a scale of zero to 10, 10 being loved it, loved it, best out there, learned at least one thing, type it in the chat right now, a scale of zero to 10. What'd you guys think? You enjoy that? Oh, <laughs> nice. Gabriel saying hand clap. King is saying 11. Doman says starry eyes. Otto says useful. Martin said 10. Guys, you guys make this fun for me. I appreciate you guys not being shy in the comments. Blendor saying 10. Rock saying 10. Maddox saying 13. Maddox and the entire team putting on the SaaS logo. I want to thank you. And I also want to thank uh, Gabriel and Alex and the entire SaaS stock parent company for being so smart about launching all these locals. Guys, SaaS businesses know no boundaries that can be built anywhere. It takes a good idea, a lot of hard work, code, sales, a little capital, and you'll be on your way. If I can be helpful, guys, I'll put my email right now in the chat. It's Nathan at founderpath.com. You can feel free to email me if you guys want help.